Hello people, in this video we want to look at acute pancreatitis under medicine. So what is pancreas guys? So where is the pancreas? Here you see the pancreas in yellow. So basically pancreas is a, a exocrine cum endocrine organ. We have only one pancreas. Right? So this is the pancreas. It is an accessory digestive gland. It's an elongated accessory digestive gland. It lies retroperitoneally. It lies where? Behind. Retroperitoneal. Okay. And um, it is um, in relation to the stomach. You can see how it is. Stomach, duodenum, right? Liver, gallbladder. This relationship is very important. So it has two parts, the pancreas. Pancreas has exocrine and endocrine part. So it has exocrine and endocrine part. So basically, uh, exocrine means what? It has a duct, isn't it? So you can see the duct here. The duct, here you can see there are two ducts. Actually, one accessory duct is there and main, main duct is there. The main duct is the duct of Virsang. It opens at the ampulla of water. Okay. Uh, the sphincter of OD is present here. Okay, so it is opening into this um, cystic duct actually. Okay, finally everything is opening into the duodenum. So what does this uh, exocrine thing do? Exocrine will produce digestive enzymes. Very good. And it will put it into the duodenum so that food can get digested. What will the endocrine do? Endocrine will make insulin hormones. So it will make glucagon also. Insulin it will make and it will make its counterpart glucagon also it will only make. Okay. So in this video what do we want to look at? We want to look at acute pancreatitis. Okay. Look at how the pancreas looks under the microscope. I mean the microscopic structure within the pancreas. So they have tried to explain it to you how it looks. There are some asini. Right. And there are some ducts. Eyelets of Langerhans. Now let's move on to acute pancreatitis. So this is a serious condition. So you should pay attention to it. Serious condition it is. Basically whatever enzyme um, the pancreas secretes, let's say trypsinogen. Right, this trypsinogen is supposed to be released in inactive form by the pancreas. Trypsinogen. Okay, whatever the pancreas release is supposed to be in inactive form. And then it is supposed to go into the duodenum and get activated and digest the food. But what will happen? There is premature, see here, premature intracellular trypsinogen activation. So what will happen? This trypsinogen will get active. It will become trypsin. Once it becomes trypsin, it will start digesting the pancreas itself. Okay. So this is very important. And what is the trigger for this? There can be alcohol, gallstones, some pancreatic duct obstruction, etc. So what will happen if pancreatic duct is obstructed? All this, uh, whatever it is producing will get stuck up within the pancreas, isn't it? So what is happening exactly here? The enzymes that the pancreas is making are getting activated prematurely and digesting the pancreas itself. So this may be because of alcohol or what else did they say? or gallstones or uh, pancreatic duct obstruction. So then they are talking about mitochondrial dysfunction, autophagy. So basically there is an inflammatory response here. Now the pancreas will become swollen. Normal pancreas has a poorly developed capsule. So normal pancreas itself has a poor capsule. So, so they are saying that all the adjacent structures also can get involved. So this is pancreas, this is pancreatitis and everything around it, the stomach, the Spleen here, the liver here, the gallbladder here, the duodenum here. So they're talking about everything that is getting involved, right? There is this balance that is lost between the proteolytic enzymes and the anti-proteolytic factors. So this balance, you should talk about this. There is, um, the severity will be dependent on this between the proteolytic enzymes. Who is going to win kind of a thing? Proteolytic enzymes or the anti-proteolytic factors? Fine. So what are the anti-proteolytic factors? The anti-proteolytic factors will be pancreatic trypsin inhibitor protein. Trypsin inhibitor protein is there. That is nice, right? Trypsin inhibitor protein is there. Then you have circulating beta-2 macroglobulin. Anti-trypsin is there. Anti-trypsin makes sense to us. Trypsin inhibitor, anti-trypsin, esterase inhibitors. So all these are going to protect, right? But the balance is kind of lost. Look at this point here. Acute pancreatitis is self-limiting. However, it can sometimes become severe 
and uh, severe uh, can lead to formation of necrosis of the pancreas, abscess, pseudocyst, etc. Systemic complications also can be the multi organ failure. That is why they are telling you that this is a serious condition. Please pay attention. Why is this happening? Let us look at. See, there are some pro enzymes here. So, because of obstruction, it is adding, the proenzymes are getting added, hyperstimulation of the pancreas, so there's more proenzymes, right? Infected bile duodenal contents, defective intracellular transport of pancreatic zymogens, so proenzymes are more. Now, proenzymes will become activated proteolytic enzymes, so trypsinogen will become trypsin. And this trypsin will start digesting the pancreas and there is inflammatory response, right? So, acute pancreatitis. From this side, something was supposed to come, the inhibitors, but these inhibitors and this proteolytic enzymes and anti-proteolytic, this balance is kind of lost. So, who, what is going to happen? The pancreas is going to suffer from its, the, from the enzymes that itself is producing, okay? So, you have understood uh, some amount of pancreatitis, right guys? So, there's a pancreas here, it is making some enzymes, but these enzymes are uh, getting activated and what is happening within the pancreas, they are getting activated and there is kind of... Uh, inflammation of the pancreas okay now why does this happen you already heard of alcohol gallstones then uh, pancreatic duct obstruction then some mitochondrial uh, factors etc you have seen but anyways here in the textbook there is a table here explaining the causes of uh, acute pancreatitis so we will look at this now so mainly you know gallstones yes you have already seen gallstones let's take that gallstones we have finished mark it come on we have seen gallstones as a cause, alcohol as a cause. We have seen um, some sphincter of OD dysfunction. That is, there is obstruction kind of a thing, right? Then what else? There is trauma, acute pancreatitis. You got hit, okay? Somebody hit you in the epigastrial area. Drugs, if you are taking like thiazide, diuretic, sodium valproate, azathioprine, mer mercaptopurine, all these can cause acute pancreatitis. Post-surgical, some surgery you have had like cardio, cardiopulmonary bypass or some abdominal surgery. Surgery, Always write one idiopathic, okay. Then, pancreas di divisum, what is that? Then, hypercalcemia, hypertriglyceridemia. Hereditary factors, always blame some hereditary. Then, uh, always blame some infections like Coxsackie virus and mumps. See, this is very specific. What can cause, uh, what infections can cause acute pancreatitis? Coxsackie virus and mumps, okay. Then, renal failure can lead to pancreatic failure, kidney failure, yeah, same thing, liver failure. Severe hypothermia, if you are way too cold, you are living in way too cold and you are not able to regulate your temperature because it is so cold around you, that can lead to pancreatitis. Looks like petrochemical ex exposure. All these are the causes of uh, pan acute pancreatitis. Post ERCP, that is some um, surgery only again, right? ERCP stands for endoscopic retrograde cholangio pancreatography. Okay, some you're going from behind with endoscope and looking at the gallbladder and the pancreas looks like. So ERCP is endoscopic retrograde, sorry it's not retroperitoneal, it's retrograde, you're going backwards, cholangiopancreatography, okay. And then idiopathic, always write idiopathic. Do not forget gallstones, gallstones can be a cause for pancreatitis because there will be obstruction, right. Then alcohol, okay. Don't forget those. What else you should not forget? Sphincter of OD dysfunction, then Always you will write drugs, trauma, infection, some tumors, all that standard things you will write. But here there is no tumor. Okay. Now it is time to move to the clinical features. Guys, what do you think these people will have? Come on, guess. There is a human here. He has pancreatitis. What do you think he will have? So this is his umbilicus. And here is his pancreas. Pancreas is here. So, what will he have? He will have pain there, epigastric pain he will have. Very good. Tenderness. And then he will be vomiting. Okay. He can have nausea vomiting. So, this is uh, very typical epigastric pain which radiates to the back. It increases over uh, in the intensity over 15 to uh, 60 minutes. They will have vomiting. Remember, it radiates to the back. It is the retroperitoneal organ. Okay. 
then um, there is epigastric tenderness you will say there can be in severe cases there can be discoloration of the flanks this is called as some gray turner sign this is that gray turner sign okay and then there is one more sign called as the cullen sign look at this this is the cullen sign around the umbilicus discoloration of the flanks gray turner sign discoloration periumbilical cullen sign okay so this is a feature of what severe pancreatitis with hemorrhage so this is very particular it's not just pancreatitis there's hemorrhage also okay so now let us come to the rupture if there is rupture of the pancreatic duct okay then what will happen there will be fluid collection and debris in the lesser sac this is known as the pancreatic fluid collection so this can lead to pseudocyst formation then anyways leave all that now come here pancreatic ascites can be there when the fluid leaks from the disrupted pancreatic duct into the peritoneal cavity so if the pancreatic fluid has entered the peritoneal cav cavity what do you call it as pancreatic ascites people there can be a leakage into the thoracic cavity and that can lead to pleural effusion so here you can see a large pancreatic pseudocyst marked in c and it is compressing the stomach s in front okay and they are saying the pancreas is atrophic atrophic and calcified the arrows are showing some calcification how do you know it is severe pancreatitis so what are the features clinical features that tell you that is severe pancreatitis clinical impression itself you will know whether that person is suffering a lot or not if the body mass index is more if he is obese if there is pleural effusion that's not good at all then there is some apache score greater than 8 this is the initial assessment then you can see the glass go glass go score greater than 3 glass go score greater than 3 will show you hold on okay then persistent organ failure is happening anybody will say that if crp is more then same thing organ failure so that time itself they told you right this is a serious condition it can lead to organ failure so this is some criteria guys they told you right glass go criteria so basically if the age is more if the <clears throat> oxygen level saturation is partial pressure is less is it white blood count is more albumin is less calcium is less glucose is more glucose is more we can guess because um, something wrong with the insulin urea is more alanine amino transferase is more lactate dehydrogenase is more this is some standard thing that you can write right everywhere lactate dehydrogenase just put it in everywhere so this glasgow coma scale you heard but that is not the one here this is different here if the score is more it is bad actually there if the score is more it is good now let us see if you do not treat this guy what will happen pancreatitis uh, acute pancreatitis if you don't treat so systemically something can happen okay first we we'll, let's look at the pancreatic pancreatic what can happen it can go into necrosis abscess pseudocyst right we already told you this there can be pancreatic ascites or pleural effusion this also we told you this is kind of local okay now gastrointestinal around it right so we said around it also it will affect so what will happen there will be gastric or duodenal erosion right there can be upper gi bleed okay there can be variceal hemorrhage there can be erosion into the colon duodenal obstruction we'll go with this obstructive jaundice because there is compression of the common bile duct because of the pancreas pancreas size is increasing right so if somebody has obstructive jaundice don't think that it is gall bladder issues it is pancreas which is enlarging and causing this issue okay now let us go to the systemic complications of acute pancreatitis focus people there is something called as sirs 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 pancreas you know look at pancreas and say sirs systemic inflammatory response syndrome okay so there is a inflammatory response of the uh, whole body hypoxia acute respiratory distress syndrome can happen okay due to microthrombi so there is a thrombus formation here in the pulmonary vessels so this guy can go into acute respiratory distress syndrome hyperglycemia why hyperglycemia because these people are uh, disruption of insulin so altered insulin is there so hyperglycemia hypocalcemia so whenever hyperglycemia hypocalcemia they are saying is it sequestration of calcium in fat necrosis So reduce serum albumin why is serum albumin less because there is increased capillary permeability so the blood is losing this albumin how is it going people let's just summarize what and all you heard in the complications of um, 
pancreatitis. So in the complications of pancreatitis, we saw uh, pancreas wise what and all will happen, pseudosis, necrosis, abscess, uh, pancreatic ascites, uh, fluoral effusion etc. Coming to GI, you saw that there can be duodenal obstruction, there can be upper GI bleed, there can be obstructive jaundice etc. Then coming to systemic, you saw there is something called a SIRS, a systemic inflammatory response syndrome or something where uh, uh, the person is having systemic inflammatory response. Then you saw that there can be thrombus leading to pulmonary problems leading to ARDS, right? Then what else did you see systemically? Albumin, they will be having less in the blood, okay, because of increased capillary permeability. Yeah, and I forgot this hypercalcemia, sorry, hyper um, glycemia hyperglycemia and hypocalcemia okay so if a person comes with these uh, symptoms what investigations you want to do see you have to check for serum lipase levels okay very important uh, see lipase is more accurate than amylase okay amylase is will be there in many conditions so lipase 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 serum lipase is very important for you <clears throat> let's write it here so that you won't forget lipase please <clears throat> lipase serum lipase you check so the thing is uh, amylase is excreted by kidneys okay so if it has increased and reduced you won't know and this uh, serum uh, amylase concentration are also elevated in many other conditions like uh, so many of these okay so we will not look at all this so basically understand that amylase is not at all good for us uh, lipase is very very good okay serum lipase measurements are preferable to amylase they have better accuracy okay then what else you do imaging ultrasound see ultrasound scan can confirm the diagnosis of uh, pancreatitis and not only that it can tell you if there are uh, if the uh, there are gallstones if there is some biliary obstruction if there is some pseudocyst formation all that ultrasound can tell you okay then coming to ct contrast enhanced uh, pancreatic ct they, they are doing after a few days okay see the thing with imaging is imaging immediately you will not be able to see okay because it has to become little more in size, then only you will be able to tell, okay, be it ultrasound or CT. But ultrasound, what they are saying is at least you can be, you can see the, if there is any gallstone, biliary obstruction or pseudocyst, etc., right. Then if there is necrosis, you will see necrotic material, presence of gas will show, suggest infection and then it will say that it is an impending abscess formation, then you will have to do bacterial culture, etc., okay. If CRP is more, that also is a, uh, predicting severe acute pancreatitis, okay, CRP, C-reactive protein being more. Here they are showing necrosis of the pancreas. Presence of gas suggests that infection has occurred. People, yay, now we have reached the, uh, reached the what? Management, treatment. Now let us enjoy the treatment for acute pancreatitis. Treatment. Treat what? Acute pancreatitis. Okay. How will you treat? Think about it. You want to reduce the pain, give some uh, opioid analgesics because the pain is severe here. You want to give that person insulin because if he doesn't have insulin, if you want to give that cal person calcium because he has hypocalcemia, very good people. That is exactly how to treat it. Okay. So you have to give uh, what and all, let us see. You have to treat the cause they are saying. Okay. That we will do. We will treat the cause. No problem. Okay. So treating cause over. Opiate analgesics you should give. Okay, you should give normal saline. Opiate analgesics is to reveal pain, relieve pain. Okay, then uh, you can uh, take your central venous line and urinary catheter so you can monitor patients in the shock input output etc. Oxygen you will give if there is hypoxia because there can be uh, some embolism, ARDS etc. So basically symptomatic treatment they are talking about. If there is SIR, a systemic inflammatory response, you may have to give ventilator support, ventilatory, ventilatory support. Okay, And then you will uh, give insulin and correct the hyperglycemia and you will give calcium and correct the hypocalcemia. Very good. Then these people may not tolerate um, uh, enteral, but if they f are tolerating normal feeding, then you can give normal feeding. Enteral means what? What we do only is enteral, right? Um, that only you will do. Enteral feeding. 
What is enteral feeding? See, let's see, wait, because it's not oral they are saying. See, this enteral feeding is a very broad term. They are not telling whether you should give it through mouth or stomach or intestine directly. But anyways, if they are able to uh, take the feed enterally, then it should be given. So, nutritional support is very important here, okay. Then uh, to that pro, uh, thromboembolism we told you, right, that can go and cause ARDS and all. So, you should give low molecular weight heparin, they are saying. And uh, you should give antibiotics to prevent infection. And what are those antibiotics that you will give to prevent infection? Carbapenem, quinolones, metronidazole. Can you remember these names at all? Carbapenem. What is carbapenem? This carbapenems come under uh, beta-lactam antibiotics. Okay. Examples are imipenem, meropenem, etc. Okay. Then guys, you have to treat the cholidocolithiasis. Okay. Gallstones, anything and all you have to uh, treat. So, biliary imaging. So, they talk talking about this uh, ERCP, endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography, right? All that you have to do, okay? So, basically you have to do if required cholecystectomy, remove the gallbladder, laparoscopic, etc. Remove those bile stones. Then, cholecystectomy you should uh, undertake within two weeks of resolution of the pancreatitis. Once the pancreatitis settles down, cholecystectomy they are talking about, okay? So, otherwise what will happen again you will have uh, obstruction and etc etc and uh, pancreatitis which could be fatal next time. So, you should be very careful. Okay. So, uh, if there is this necrosis etc they are doing necrosectomy that is the first time we heard this word necrosectomy interesting just remove the necrosis. How will you do that? Minimally invasive retroperitoneal pancreatic necrosectomy. Okay. Then pseudocyst etc if there you can drain them. Okay. That's it guys. So in this video, we have looked at acute pancreatitis. We have looked at. Okay. See you. Bye-bye.